call the uh, Alton Budget Committee meeting to order for December 15th. Do the roll call. Lawrence Tilly. Mark Dekoff. Steve Miller. Barbara Howard. Lauren Cahan. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you look at the agenda. Oh. <laughs> I'm up. I'm up. <laughs> you know, I'm in the wrong spot. I got moved over. Here. Sorry. I move we approve the agenda as amended, as uh, presented. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. So we added public input at the beginning too. So is there anybody that wants to do any public input? <laughs> okay, come up and uh, introduce yourself. Yes. Thank you. Um, my name is Steve Renner. I'm a parent of two children at Alton Central School, and I just wanted to come and state my opinion that I, that I firmly believe that it's a good time to move forward with the school renovation project, and I'm hopeful that the town is supportive of that project. Um, and I was reminded today, a friend of mine called me actually asking for investment advice, which is funny um, <laughs> for a couple of different reasons. But in the end, we, you know, we agreed, you know, it's, it's not... It's not a great time in terms of what you're gaining in, in your investments, but it's, it's actually, if you're able to do it, it's a good time to be able to make investments. If you have a little extra, it's a good time to buy low. And, and I started thinking about it in reference to the school project and doing it now, taking a little hit now to, to make the improvements that we need to make that investment in the future is going to be a really good idea. Um, not only cost effective in terms of labor costs for the actual renovation project, but you know obviously the important part is the investment in the children and in the, in the future that we would be able to offer them and, and to this community as a whole. So I would just encourage you to consider those things when you're hearing the project proposal and, and making decisions from a budgetary standpoint that it is money and it's a lot of money, but it's a good time to invest. Okay. Thanks. Anybody else? You sure? I can take my coat off because it's hot. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, it occurred to me that it may be appropriate sometime around old business to make a report from the um, Prospect Mo Mountain High School Committee. Why don't you? Uh, we'll pro probably be able to go right to that. Mm -hmm. Because we're going to table the minutes from the 15th. And November 15th and December 1st. Those are the only two minutes we have to approve. Because we just got December 1st and they're pretty long. Okay. Um, okay? Sure. So you want to go right into... Okay, I'll... Um, let me just um, uh, go right into the um, report from the uh, high school. Uh, the high school made a total number, a uh, total amount of reductions of $127,416 with a recommendation uh, for the high school JMA of $6,842,991. Uh, we spent approximately four meetings and we went through the following reductions from the high school budget. These were the reductions that were, were recommended and were ultimately passed by the Budget Committee. From the 1100 account, account there, was a reduc there were two reductions, one for $1,365 for a uh, tuba and $270 for uh, dues and fees. Before I go any further, uh, the, um, the Budget Committee was consistent in recommending a reduction in dues and fees from all um, uh, from uh, all amounts 
that were uh, due to professional and association dues and the fees that benefited the teachers directly, but essentially did not have a direct effect on the students or the children. Uh, the, um, in technology and equipment, there was a reduction of new equipment, which was for new computers for $27,300 and for tech support for $1,000. In special education, there was the elimination of the 2% raise, which was consistent throughout the entire high school uh, re uh, reduction recommendations. The um, Budget Committee uh, recommended uh, the elimination of the 2% merit raises uh, throughout, um, uh, all, uh, throughout all accounts and throughout all lines. Uh, gifted and talented remained unchanged. Vocational education remained unchanged. Athletics remained unchanged. Summer school remained unchanged. Uh, guidance, dues and fees, there was a reduction of $1,070. Health services remained unchanged. Improvement of and, uh, improvement of instruction. I believe remained unchanged. Okay, thank you. Uh, there was a reduction from improvement instruction for a guest speaker, which was a motivational speaker, for two thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. Library and equipment um, was re uh, was reduced. New equipment was reduced seven thousand one hundred and fifteen dollars which was new equipment put off for the next year. Library dues and fees was reduced by $220,000, and library books was level funded, therefore reduced to $2,500, but level funded at $7,500. Distance learning was reduced by $6,000, uh, which means that Latin was continued, Japanese was continued, and other distance learnings um, Subject matter was continued with the only um, reduction in Mandarin Chinese for $6,000. The superintendent uh, raises for 2%, which is effectively the 2% merit raises for staff and administration, was reduced by $23,300. Uh, superintendent dues and fees was reduced $875. Uh, the, um, the contingency uh, the conti for under the principal account, the contingency for um, for fifty five hundred dollars, which is the amount of money used in addition to the current budget to hire a new assistant principal, of an additional fifty five hundred dollars was reduced. Food uh, from the principal line was reduced by two thousand dollars. This is not uh, from the uh, kids, from, from the students for food service, but two thousand dollars was reduced from uh, the principal's um, uh, use of food for things such as senior banquet, etc. Principal dues and fees were reduced by one thousand seven hundred ninety-five dollars. Business services uh, dues and fees was reduced to $1,205. On the building and maintenance, lawn care was reduced $13,000, which was the amount that was requested to repair the baseball field, and it was felt that that could be put off for next year. Electricity was reduced by $15,000 because it was a contingency warrant um, uh, proposed by the high school. Repairs and maintenance for the building was reduced by uh, $1,185 to keep that uh, level fund to keep that line level funded from the previous year. Transporta uh, and transportation athletics was reduced by $1,300 to keep that level funded from the pr from the prior year. And because we felt that there was uh, too much money there, assumed for a maximum of postseason uh, games. And that accounted for the full reduction 
um, recommendation of $127,416 and for the recommended budget of $6,842,991. And what's Alton's percentage of what? It was 50 Fif 52? No. It, was, it might have been a decimal there, but approximately 52% uh, is Alton's percentage this year. 52.3, something like that. Yep. Does that sound right? It, yes, and it was uh, 47 point, no. Yeah, bond Seven. Okay, and if somebody could share what the exact amount is, you know, we'll be happy to put it into the record. Can you tell me the bottom line again, Steve? Six million. Six million, 842,991 dollars. 991? That's correct. 991. Six, yes, yeah, six million eight forty two nine nine one, and it was approximately broken up by fifty two forty eight percent. The principal's vice, the vice principal is is that a raise that they want to give the new per, a new person coming in? Well, they want to uh, they want to up the kitty to hopefully attract attract somebody. Okay. That they can keep instead of just using. The high school is a uh, bring them in for a year. Okay. They get experience and move on. Okay. So the, the, that wasn't a. They didn't give you a range. They said that was what they're gonna. That was the contingency. That they needed that additional amount of dollars to it. They felt to attract a quality uh, principal. Uh, we felt that there's a limited pool out there of qualified principals. That somebody would, quite frankly, we have the school has a lot to offer and that we'd be able to um, recruit with the current budget. Okay. And by the way, they have somebody, and there's somebody taking that position at this time uh, from an internal promotion. Now, they haven't recruited the next person yet, but they indicated that person has done a good job so far. Okay. Anything else? Uh, that's all from us. Oh, yeah. And then uh, warrant, uh, warrant articles. Let me see. Warrant articles from high school. There were, um, there were three uh, warrant articles from the high school. Uh, the exact wording uh, has not been um, uh, down to the uh, the exact dollar has not been um, finited as yet. Uh, the, uh, the, fir uh, the, f the first article is um, f from improvement for improvement on for instruction, which is a total of thirty thousand dollars to be divided by the proportion of approximately fifty-two percent to forty-eight percent, approximately fifteen thousand dollars each. The exact amount, figure 452 or 48, uh, set aside uh, to um, retire that number eventually. In other words, if proven instruction currently runs around, let's say, $90,000 a year, the intention of the um, the intention of the high school the high school school board is to fund that article piecemeal year after year at approximately a $30,000 rate so that there is $90,000 in that fund at some point in time to, uh, to fund the exact amount of improvement of instruction used, which is tuitions that, um, uh, t that is tuition money that, other, that teachers take advantage of up to $2,000 a year for an individual course or seminar, et cetera. Um, the, uh, there, was, there was another article for a uh, contingency for fuel, which is 1% of the operational budget. And the operational budget it was utilities. So it utilities, thank you. electricity. Exactly. exactly. Thank you very much. Uh, there was a 1% utility, utility budget, a Warren article. Uh, that will be something in the neighborhood of $68,000 and change, depending upon what's approved by the school board. Uh, that will be um, uh, used for kerosene, propane, uh, fuel, uh, gas, and building fuel as needed.
uh, which is uh, somewhat like what they have used before. And the third and the third warrant article was for. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It was for general maintenance. I believe that was for fifty. Was that, that was for fifty thousand dollars for general maintenance, uh, to be split equally twenty five thousand between each uh, town, uh, to be used for a uh, for in, <clears throat> to grow the general maintenance fund for emergency situations. Those because I think things. they're going to use the whole fund this year for the uh, fire suppression system to fix it. Yeah, that was mentioned. It, uh, that's not in stone, but that's... Yeah, that's, that's what was mentioned, that's that it's correct. probably going to take up the whole... How old is that building now? 2000, it's th 2001 is when the JMA came into existence, so it was built when, Lauren? Mm, it's like two, three, three, four. 2004. Yeah. Well, it's costed us almost a million dollars to maintain it. We have a field that floods routinely. That was never installed correctly. Um, we have sump pumps that run 24-7 down in the auditorium or else that would flood. Um, you know, the list goes on. I'm not that impressed. Hey, are we done? Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's, that comes out to be 1.8% from what their proposal was. Right. We don't, right. we don't have the hard number, but that's an approximate measure. That's an approximate. Okay. That's correct. And... Um, According to the DRA, you do not need to have a, dark, a, a hard number. You only need to have a range right. for the public, for purposes of the public hearing. But for purposes of the special warrant article itself, it has to be exact. Okay. okay. Thank Thanks. You. You're welcome. You guys ready? So there is no school board rep? <laughs> it's your school board. <laughs> no, I'm your employee. <laughs> That's right. Does anybody know why we right. don't? She didn't vote him in. We did. <laughs> I know. No. <laughs> there, uh, should we be waiting for a school board rep? Should we expect one? I don't, I don't know. I can't answer that. Okay. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, not, it's not that important, I guess. I have um, copies of the warrant. Oh, thoughts from. I didn't know if you needed it. Thanks. Anyway. Actually, you need to copy the warrant as well. I what? just handed them to you. <laughs> Thank you. One. Mm -hmm. This is a possible. Possible. Do we need extras? Keep extras? Huh? You want to keep the extras? For uh, Virgil, everybody, every, Virgil we, and. Uh, yeah, keep some for Virgil. Can I ask the um, chairman? We have here a possible warrant article. Is it um, is it our duty to look at possible warrant articles? Well, it's got money, right? But is it, it's not. It hasn't. Has this been voted by the school board? No, but I can explain. Okay. All right. So we we've got three three different handouts. Correct. One, one's the uh, thoughts from. The architect. Would you like us to take a minute and read this? Or sure. Thank you. Hey. Thanks.
<clears throat> uh, quick clarification on the discussion of the cafeteria. Um, there's a couple question marks in there. Is it? It's definitely four lunch periods that they run right now. Correct. And they start as early as about 10:45 or 10:40. Do you know? It's a little earlier. 10:30. 10:30. We have one other Thanks. document. This is in relation to um, Virgil's question. So I can answer that as well. I'd like to have it stated in the record, in the minutes, that um, we're dealing with um, the warrant articles uh, for the school today, including um, uh, a very, very uh, significant one, and that there is not one s single school board member in attendance to ask questions or represent the school for this committee, although we do have the superintendent, we do have the business manager, and also that the principal is absent as well. The principal's at another committee meeting. Pardon? She's at another committee meeting. Well, it's not as important as this one. I understand. Is that a public committee that she's at? Yes. What's the name of that public committee? The um, Communications Committee for Buildings and Grounds. The, it's a subcommittee for Buildings and Grounds. Yes. Thank you. You're not, you're not on that committee. Hi. Is everybody have time to? No. I didn't read them, all three of them. I was just reading the architect one. We've seen the other ones, and we're going to read them, right? No. We, what, you've seen this one? No, we're going to read them, though. Yeah, but I wouldn't like to look at them. <clears throat> So when are we possibly going to have a contract to look at? Uh, hopefully. Well, my goal is to have it before the 10th of January. If we don't have it by the 10th of January, you will not have a contract and it will not be on this warrant. 10th of January is, is the public hearing. Yes. The public Is the public hearing? Yes. That's the, the date that it must be available for the public. Okay, and <clears throat> I'm, just, I'm just curious, uh, you, would ex you would expect this um, budget committee, if you delivered it on the 10th, to make a quick decision at that time, yay or nay, on the contract with no notice? That's the law. I understand. I'm just asking what you expect. I... Well, we can make the... Uh recommendation after the public hearing. Correct. You don't have to make it during. <coughs> Correct. Okay. So then the voters wouldn't know which way we were leaning. At the public hearing, right. they would not know. <coughs> but that is the date that the right. DRA has said all contracts must be brought forward by that date. I cannot change that. Okay. That's the date that is given and we have up until that day to continue yep. negotiations. Okay. Do uh, in your professional estimation, will we have a contract by that time? I don't know, and I'm not sure I would be permitted to provide that information to you anyway. Hi. Everybody had time to review everything? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
So what do we, we want to look at Article 3 first, or do you I want just, to go over? Our I just wanted first. to reference first. Virgil had asked why we had Article 2 on the warrant. Yep. It's an RSA. Okay. And I did say it's required, so you now have the RSA to go along with that. If there's any questions, and I don't know if when you get to the final vote, I know you're doing pre-votes on these, but if you get to the final vote, if it changes how anyone voted, that's mm -hmm. the information for that. Article 3. Yep. Um, okay, you, you want me to read it first? Or? Sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Article 3, to see if the school district will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $18,800,615.00 and no cents for renovations, reconstructions, repairs, and constructions of an addition to the Alton Central School and, to, and for furnishing and equipment in the school and to authorize the issuance of an, not more than $18,042,000 in no cents of a bond or notes in accordance with the provision of the Municipal Finance Act, RSA 33, and to authorize the school board to issue the, and negotiate such bonds or notes and to determine the rate of interest thereon. Furthermore, to authorize the withdrawal of $19,832.20 from the water heater capital reserve funds, $239,011.33 from the fire suppression capital reserve fund, $25,741.22 from the security safety expendable trust fund, $446.18 from the electrical service upgrade expendable trust fund, $1,839.23 from the Bathroom Refurbishment Expendable Trust Fund, $31,103.52 from the Window <coughs> Replacement Expendable Trust Fund, $440,666.06 from the Buildings and Grounds Expendable Trust Fund, with the balance of $18,042,000 and no cents, and further to raise and appropriate an additional sum of $410,956.67 for the first year's interest payment on the bond. Good job. Yeah. Just, just, a, uh, qu just a quick question on what if the balances from the expendable trust funds are not available because there's been an emergency and those funds had to be used? Then we would, we cannot overexpend what is voted. Simple as that. Whatever is voted by the voters for the amount of the bond, we cannot overexpend. So you'd have to adjust. Yes. Okay. Are these the current total balances yes. in that so you don't have a buffer? Uh... No. The only buffer would the only buffer would be the interest earned over the year until the end of June. Oh. This is the probably since I haven't been in I haven't uh, I've only been here ten years. This is probably the second largest uh, Warren article that the uh, town or the district certainly has ever seen. Correct. And based on that, every single school board member was busy and couldn't be here to discuss this Warren article, which means it's not that important to them. That's a statement. I cannot fathom that the um, school district would ask for $18 million and not have a representative here to talk to us. And I understand you're the representative, and uh, I, don't, um, I don't have an issue with your competency one bit. I do have an issue with the school board not caring enough to be here and essentially telling me that they have either given up on this issue or they don't care about it that much. Because I don't believe that, was it, five people on that school board? Five people on that school board, everyone had an emergency situation that was more important than $18 million to put in front of the town right now. I think they might have an issue with being forced into some transparency. So this, maybe we, this is This up? is so wrong on so many levels that I can, that it is hard to comprehend. Okay, that's good. Okay. Hey, why go isn't on. the? Can I ask a question? 
How come it didn't take away the 18,000? It says the balance, but it's the same number on the on the um, bottom of the second page as the first. We have to subtract that because the we're asking for to um, if you look at the to authorize the issuance of the amount for the bond because we're also withdrawing the funds. So, so shouldn't we subtract the all of these hundred and from the gross appropriation the 18, in the first amount from the eighteen eight. Eighteen million eight hundred thousand six hundred fifteen dollars. Then you take out all of those trusts and capital reserves, and it drops it down to the eighteen million forty-two thousand dollars. Those two numbers should subtract out. I did it once. I haven't done it again. So if you subtract all of the trusts and capital reserves from the first number, they should balance. We must gross appropriate first and then talk about how much we're going to issue in bonds and then also tell you that this is the additional first year of the so what, interest. It's hard to understand. Just reading that the first time, it's like... I know, I know and confused. that's required. It's required. We did double check with our attorney. So what did you use for an interest rate for the first year? 4%. 4%. The interest rate, the interest rate is 4% for the whole duration so long as the town People approve the vote, and then we sell the bond. It's throughout the duration. It doesn't. It's not okay. So it's going to be a fixed rate. Twenty-year bond, and also, and I'm just I'm saying this, and I'm going to make sure that Kathy checks it. We, this will fit in with Prospect Mountains. The difference, obviously, is a twenty-year bond versus a ten, but the payments, the tax payments, will fit. So the tax rate in year one will not be affected. Now, I can't tell you what will happen over time because taxes will change, but this will not change what the tax is in as a result of this bond compared to the 10-year. But if we didn't approve this bond, our tax rate would go down. We'd go down. Absolutely. And I'm not going to tell you that there's no cost to this. There's an 18 million cost to this. Oh, I agree. Uh, but uh, it, there's a lot to it. And I know that Mr. Miller had asked me to get some projections, which I did my best to do. And I can explain in detail about that. But I think the Buildings and Grounds Committee has done their best to make this a reasonable project to still address the needs of some other issues besides. I know the focus has been on the addition. Um, if you read Chip Krause's report, only Excuse three. Excuse me. I, I just like to question the bond itself. OK. OK. What is the rating on the bond? The interest rate, did you no, say? No, what is the rating? Double A, single A, triple A, double it's, A plus? It's through the New Hampshire Municipal Bond Bank. And it, they are. Grab my information on that. I do have a document somewhere in my pile that states what their rating is. Okay, do you know whether the bond is insured or not insured? I can tell you I contacted four different districts in the state of New Hampshire in the past two weeks to find out where they go to get their bonds. Um, school districts that have recently done big, large bond projects, including Governor Wentworth. All of them said they went through New Hampshire Municipal Bond Bank because of the rates, because of the, the working relationship, and be, because of the fact that they, um, if they went anywhere else, they couldn't get the rate. The rate is phenomenal through them. I, I couldn't even go to a bank to ask them to even give us a rate because I'd have to go through the whole paperwork of the application. They will not give you a rate even on the fly. You have to go through the whole nine yards. Okay, what, okay, we don't know the rating. We don't know whether it's insured or not. Do 
you know I can what only the, imagine you know what the administration costs the administration That's costs on the bond if you want what the total discuss, bond would be can I just ask yeah. that if you need something else to talk about let me find it in here I do have it sure, printed right out. Ahead. yeah I have a question so the uh, 18 million dollars that we're going to spend and it's going to be for 20 years are we going to in 20 is it is this addition going to be sufficient enough for the next 20 years or are we going to have to that's our plan is that this should take care of everything that we need for 20 years based on the projections that were done by NESDEC and that's why we had the study done prior to doing our design process this should take care of everything for 20 years so how much more square footage is going to be added is that in here somewhere yes so we're going to have to possibly add staff for no right at the moment we have no plans for adding staff at all the only way I'm that just... staff gets added is through the regular budgetary process and i will tell you that even though the warrant article says for furnishings that's the way the article gets written we are not also we're not planning on purchasing any furnishings we do not have any need for it we have plenty of desks chairs etc for all of the students that we have we have all of the staff for all of the planning that we're doing the only way that there would be any additional staff is if it goes through the regular budget process so with some of the extra room being used to bring all the children in out of the portables and into all the of building, the portables the will be gone all the school all the um seating and everything else from those portables and right. fill those everything rooms. that's in the portables will be brought back into the building all of the books the materials the wall charts everything will be brought back into that building that second floor will be completely taken up by what is presently in the portables um, the, was this was this bond put out for bid we haven't sold the bond yet was the bond put out for bid to get the 4% interest rate? No. I contacted the bond bank with the request for the type of schedule that was wanted, and she gave me the most conservative rate that there was. So in other words, between now and if the voters approve, and when you sell the bond, if the voters do approve in March, she says, I don't want there to be a jump. So I'm being very conservative. She stated to me that the other day they sold a bond for uh, tens, I think it was $20 million for, 10, for 20 years at 3.41%. So they're not going to lowball it and then expect it to go up. That is not what they're in the business to do. My only concern is this. I don't agree with you not putting a security camera out for bid for $10,000. Mm -hmm. It is unconscionable not to put $18 million out for bid. I for do. instance, a Goldman Sachs, a UBS, well, will, can I? will buy the whole bond and resell it, and they will bid on $18 million. The municipal Bomb Bank does that themselves. They put it out to bid. We use them, and they put it out to bid. And when I spoke to the, the bond bank, they listed a whole slew of those okay. huge, I mean, if I had my notes, I think I do. So they serve like a brokering Bank role. of Ma Bank of America, uh, Morgan and Chase, uh, Citigroup, J.P. Morgan. Okay. They do. They send it out. They got eight bids on this particular bond that they just sold the other day for 3.41. When it goes out for bid, is it all or none? What if? Well, is it 18 million dollars or nothing? Or, for instance, if only out of, if when when it's sold. Only sixteen million dollars of it can be sold no, no, and no, returned no. to the side. It's, it's an all or none bid. It's, it's yes, an all or none bid. Absolutely. Okay. And the eighteen million dollars in change that's stated here, does that include all administration, all marketing, all potential, all insurance costs? In other words, when when Right, the process you need to go through to get to that point even. Does so this is the total amount of the bid. I'm sorry, the total amount of the bond and there are no zero additional costs correct no, that's correct okay. i mean Thank there you. are other costs but we've included those in all, the all costs in the bond are included yes. in the 18 million and change that's reflected here correct, correct. 
Thank you. You're welcome. And the, the credit ratings is through uh, Moody's Investor Services. And as of the 2005 resolution, it's rated as an A1. A1? A1. This is right on the bond bank facts on their website. Okay, that that's, that's a somewhat low rating. And, it, it and it's, it's, only, it's only a suggestion. But Standard & Poor's, Fitch, et cetera, there are other rating, there are other, number one, there are other rating services. That yeah. I can ask further sure. information to see if they have other ratings, but based on the fact okay. sheet from the bond bank, that's what they state they have. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? You know... We didn't have enough land down there. How are we going to, how is this going to address the lack of land? It does not. However, the rules have changed. We're not obligated to provide the additional land that we used to be. We simply are required to follow or at least bring this to the planning board. And that's the reason that building up makes sense versus trying to build out further because we take the space that we have and we maintain it. And so we will utilize the space we have without adding to the floor plan. The site plan stays the same. The floor plan adds space without doing it. And we actually gain space by taking the modulars out. <coughs> when did the rules change on that? 2000, I have to look it up. I want to say 2009. Because in March of 2008, I had a discussion with the uh, State Board of Education. Uh, I believe it was Ed Murdo. And it was in response to an article that was in the front page of our local paper about the land requirement. And at that time, all we had to do was, it was never a requirement. It was a recommendation from the state um, school board. And all we had to do was apply for a waiver because obviously Manchester, Concord, Nashua, the bigger communities don't have land to be accessed for their schools. So but you still had to apply for the waiver. The rule was this, you applied for the waiver. We had several waivers on that property already. Mm -hmm. So, but my point is there never was a requirement though. It was never an RSA, there was never an No, it was a standard. It was a recommendation, period. So if you could get it, fine. If not, it's not a problem, is the way it was explained to me. But it's like a recommendation of a parking spot. If the recommendation is to have a 10-foot wide parking spot, and now they say, okay, you can have anything you want, and you have an 8-foot parking spot with, it, it isn't, the, the you know, I don't want to say ideal, but it's, it's a situation where it's not really the best buy. You know, if you have to open the door and bang into the car beside you, they have recommendations for the number of students because over the years they've seen that that works works best. So that's why I'm just, I'm, I don't know, we've bought this thing and bought this thing is, about the land. The now, land is, a, is for use for extracurricular activities, correct? That's right. And, we, right, and but, a long time ago, but, the community and the, and the people have said that's what they want in a part of the education. Way back in... Kennedy's time when I was in school that was the big pushback then so we've gone down this road and now all of a sudden it's oh, forget it why do we it's like it's history always so the thing itself. of it is though the town owns fields that the students can access why wouldn't that be considered part of an extension of what's going on it's for the kids whether it's at the school or at the town field except for the transportation of having them just like walking down to the down to the Trombley property, and we get back into that com that problem again. I, I would just like to, you know, put out there a novel idea. Parents can drive their own children sometimes. Yeah, hey. that's a novel idea, but we haven't been doing it for the last 35 years. I've got years. another question. Well, maybe it's time to... Obviously, this will be able to bring in more kids. Obviously, Bonstead is outgrowing that building. Have we thought about tuitioning in their seventh and eighth graders? That's right at the moment. We're just planning to build for this, and there is no intention of phys physically finishing 
okay. the complete top floor. However, with the removal of the gym, we still needed to expand the cafeteria. And as I explained at the last meeting that I was here, yep. we're pushing out the cafeteria, taking out the teacher's room and the family and consumer science room. We can no longer put the gifted and talented room where we were going to put it. So three out of the planned non-used space on the third floor, three classroom spaces, I don't know where those, what they will be, need to be used on that third floor. The rest will remain unfinished. One of those walls has to go up as a wall, but that classroom will not be finished. So you'll have five unused spaces on that third floor that will be left for whatever needs to be de developed in the future. So that will be future development. Um, if at some point this community decides that they wish to make that available, they could do so. Um, Help fund the... <laughs> yes. What I would like to address, Mr. Miller had said that he indicated that he would support 625 students for 10 years, that growth. Um, and so I did my best to look for projections. Um, this plan is for 20 years, not 10. And that's considered the, the life of the bond. But as you know, we have a building that is now 60 years old, um, or a little more. But, and that's not an unusual time period for a building to last, so that's our hope. Um, but given the changes in the proposed facility, we are going to have to use a little more of the space than we anticipated, so that automatically drops what was going to be a, a facility for 800 students down to about 725. Um, and that being the case, now we need to look at where I was looking for numbers and tried to get information to answer his question. So I started with Dennis DeLay at the New Hampshire Center for Public Policy Studies, um, which is where an awful lot of information on demographics is obtained for the state. Um, he provided me with the data that he had available, but pointed out that new data has been difficult to get because the places that collect data no longer do so in the state. Um, he did direct me to the Lakes Region Planning Commission in Meredith, which I will address in a minute. He did state that there were 20,000 fewer births, uh, fewer eight, zero to 18 year olds in New Hampshire between 2000 and 2010, and much of this was as a result of fewer births, although a lot moved out in the 2008 to 2010 period. Alton has, had, has been on a pretty steady growth pattern for um, a long period of time. And um, he suggested that we could look at the indicators such as zoning restrictions, workforce housing, multifamily developments, et cetera, to see what growth we could expect. Sometimes zoning restrictions, the way that other factors such as what's going on in planning affect what you can expect for growth. Um, I did ask him if he could do any projections based on his years of experience in both demographics and in New Hampshire, and he responded that New Hampshire went through a worse, in many respects, economy or recession. It was not as protracted um, back in the late 1980s and early 1990s with a great out-migration of New Hampshire population. However, in the last housing bubble, it was fairly localized to New England and the North Atlantic. The prices increased dramatically, and then housing became cheaper again. Um, this housing bubble, he indicated, is worldwide. Therefore, you can't sell a house no matter where you are, unlike what happened in the 1980s, and because that was, then it was regional, and now everyone is trying to sell a house, and no one is being able to move. So he indicated that this, although what happened in the late 80s and early 90s, probably for us in this region was actually a worse recession, it wasn't as protracted, and it was regional. So that did have a factor. So I said, okay, what can you tell me from that? And he said, well, we can assume that New Hampshire will keep its competitive edge, but there are no guarantees. And then he said he believes that growth will come back to this region. So. And then I went. Why is that? Because this is what he does for a living. No. Why is the what's the rationale? The growth comes back. 
he believes that based on New Hampshire's competitive edge that we keep because we still have a good quality of life, that we have the business tax the way it has been, this is what he believes will occur. Okay, so there's no quantitative data. This is intuitively what he feels will take place. Yes, Thank based you. on years of experience. Thank you. Second of all, um, because he recommended, I then contacted um, the Lakes Region Planning Commission and I talked to Eric Senecal there. Um, Dave Hussey is Alton's representative on this commission. Um, and he indicated that the commission has done projections in the past, but they aren't doing them or they have not done them recent other than um, for 2010. Um, and I do have some of their charts if you want to look at those from their, 19, uh, their 2010 study. He gave me some additional information. Um, the median age of the distribution, which he said indicates what you can look at somewhat for growth. Um, in Alton, the median age is 40 years, which is somewhat lower than the region, but higher than the national average. The region's uh, median age is 45 years. The national um, median age is 34 years, and in, in the highest, so that you can get a sense of it, in um, our region is Hebron, which is 55 years. Alton was the top region in net change in housing units in the last 10 years. The growth trends were Alton, Barnstead, Guilford, and Gilmanton topped the growth in the Lakes region over a 10-year period. He indicated that as Concord grows, people who want land move to these communities because it's an easy commute, inexpensive land, and the quality of life is um, what they're looking for. And uh, Alton was highest in net growth in the last 20 years and the highest in the percentage of growth in the last 10 years. Um, he then recommended that I contact the Office of Energy and Planning, but he called back probably within 20 minutes to tell me that um, the office no longer does those population projections. And even though they used to have them on their website, they have taken that down. So the only other thing that I was able to get that he had recommended I do, which was to look at the Alton Town Planner's Office for building permits. And so what I have is um, in 2007, there were 40, 40 42, <laughs> 42 building permits. In 2008, there were 56. 2009, there were 24. 2010, there were 13. And in 2011, to date, which is pretty close to the end of the year, there were 24. So they dropped rapidly from 2008, um, and they're back up to where they were two years ago, but I have no idea how to give you an answer because nobody is doing projections. Okay. Our NESDEC projections, um, I don't know if you want that information. I can give it to you. How do you account for the decrease in enrollment then, um, trending down for the last 10 years? We're essentially um, the same or lower than 10 years ago. So it's just as easy to extrapolate the past 10 years exactly. to, the, to the next 10. So nobody really knows, quite frankly. Uh, as I said, what I can give you is yeah. what they um, project out. Mm -hmm. um, this is from the Census and the New Hampshire Office of Energy and Planning. Mm -hmm. um, the Alton was, um, in 2000, the, in the population was 4,502. In 2010, it was 5,630. And by 2030, which would be when we anticipate approximately when this building would be hitting its 20-year bond, um, is 7,120. And there's no way of knowing, without knowing the demographics, whether that increase is 100%, for instance, and Retired people, people not in child rearing years. Correct. That's why they said to look at the age sure. of the, the median age. Okay. Concerning the demographics, though, um, you know, the way I understood it when this was originally being brought and there was the separate gym, you were looking at a three floor with the third floor as being optional future growth, you know, definitely had more concern on the demographics. At this point, once you remove the gym, you reorganize the inside of the school, that third floor is required to bring the current population in. Correct. At least at some point. So, and keep the rooms that we need. Yep. So, you, you know, your quote, future growth is really empty space that has to be there on a floor that has to already be built. To use. To use. So it, it's not, I, I can see it's not as much of a questionable item, you know, regarding the growth on that. 
I, I certainly understand Mr. Miller's concern. It's, it's a third floor that... 50% used. May never be used. Mark, how many, how many houses did you say we have in foreclosure right now in Alton? 22 uh, or 27? It was... Seven. Right. Let me see if Russ has got that paper. He was supposed to give it to me. Oh. I think the point that um, Bob is trying to make is uh, we have a record number of foreclosures in Alton right now, uh, very close to it, a record number of short sales going on right now that people are losing their homes because they can't, obviously cannot afford to pay the mortgage. Part of the mortgage is the taxes. Mm -hmm. And people, if they are afford, can afford their homes, they're making a decision right now of um, w whether or not to pay the mortgage uh, or uh, shall we use electricity, shall we use